Good evening, I Rapstein, and we're here now with your financial market wrap up for the evening of Wednesday, the 18th of May, 2022, 6.45 p.m. So we're getting a lot of terrible news and the stock market's reacting in a sharp drop. No surprise. I woke up early this morning, first thing I saw was Target and I was putting out my 5.30 update and I go, folks, we're down 22% in Target already. And then as I was doing the spider ETF wrap up, we were down to 24%. Uh, I don't know if you saw Kohl's. Kohl's was down 11% today and aftermarket it's down another four is two of its key executives, they turned in their resignation. One leaves immediately, the other's leaving June 1st. And guess what tomorrow is for Kohl's? Earnings day. So I only mention this for a reason. The Fed wants the consumer to pull back. That's why it's raising interest rates. It's what makes things work. The Fed can control certain items of demand. It cannot control the price of gasoline. It can control how much money you have to buy it, but it can't control the overall force. It certainly is not gonna control the price of medicine that you might need. And food prices are run by the marketplace, not by the Fed in just about any manner you can imagine. I mean, a little bit of Fed influence. I need a new tractor. It costs too much to buy things of that nature. But that's what you have. And what you're now seeing is the impact of the items the Fed can't control on the consumer doing the job for the Fed. You're pushing gasoline across America at prices we've not seen. That impacts your driving. Food prices, go to the store, tell me that they're not sharply higher in just about every case. You're running into that, all right? So what can you control? Well, the consumer can control one thing, what he buys. So as he's going in, and I'm talking middle-class America, not the guy that's going into Neiman Marcus or another high-priced fancy store. I'm talking the average guy out there going into his tractor and supply store, his Walmart, his Target, his Kohl's, and he's choosing. He's making choices, and they're not buying the way they were. Well, guess what that does to the supply chain? It's a good thing. All of a sudden, those stores aren't buying as much. The supply chains get a chance to fill. If the supply chain fills, the demand, you're not chasing price when you've got a full chain already. I don't need that right now. And this takes prices down. Now, then you get the Fed, not the Fed, you get the Chinese with their wonderful package of zero tolerance to, to uh, beat COVID, which it'll never do, never. That package shuts down 31 cities. It cripples everything. And then American companies that need those goods can't make sales. Cisco gets hit. Apple gets hit. I can go down the line. This is not the worst thing. It's how you control inflation. So do I think the Fed's going to have to run anywhere near as far as people think on raising interest rates? I've gone on record. I'm going to repeat it. No, it's gonna be a shorter duration. It's still gonna kick the market up sharply from where we're at right now. It will curtail demand. And the name of the game is to try to initiate a landing where jobs aren't wiped out. It will be then called a soft landing, not a recession. And the market lands at a new footing. But in the process, the stock market gets hit. I write about all this tonight, done it, I've written it. People that get my full research will see this in my written updates. Those of you that uh, don't do that, shame on you because it's really something to read tonight. I think it's excellent. Metals getting hit for these reasons. Dollar probably gonna find stability here. It went back to the 18 day average to do it. So in the stock market, we keep going down. The word, let me see, what's the word I'm looking for? Ah, multiples, price earning multiples. My God, am I stupid? Yeah, as you're going down like this, what are you doing to them? Taking the markets down. What's the Fed want to do? It's not after breaking the stock market. It's about after breaking demand. And in the case of that, you're not going to buy these certain companies' goods, right? That, that's what demand is. That's demand. Pull back on demand. They come down as a group. And that's what you have going on, with the exception, 11 sectors, all the sectors, 
that make up the SPX. There's only one sector that has been up this year. You are aware that I put that in my newsletter tonight. Energy, up 46%. Everything else is down. Different degrees of down, but they're all down. So I look at this market and I go, okay, you're, you're in that phase. I don't know where the low is. I'm not interested. I'm interested in playing a trend if I can catch a trend play. The trend today reestablished to the downside. We had stepped out of that for a while. We had a pattern here where the market came down and we were getting a bounce. Now with this outside day down until this high is taken out, Chartists like me say, ah, there's a new kid on the block. I've got another new number I can work with. And until that's taken out against it, I'm looking for areas to potentially be short. Well, where did that number come in? Oh, my gosh, it's the 18-day average of closes. How could that possibly be? Where did that show up from? And it showed up when you lost the darn embedded reading. And that's where markets normally go. And then from that number, they decide what they're doing next. Simple. It's not difficult. It's not rocket science. Take the name off the chart. Open up your favorite stocks. Put my Bollinger Bands on them. Put my uh, slow stochastics on them. Do it that way. You tell me what you find. Write me about it. When you look at the NASDAQ, yes, you made your run. You don't have to exactly hit the number. It is ideal. You have to make your run for it when you lose the embedded reading. Now, could we re-embed again? We could. It isn't going to happen right away. It can't happen this week. I can promise you that. It would take at the earliest until middle of next week, maybe. Where do I think support's going to show up in the Dow? Against the Bollinger Band. Where did it fail on the rally? You lost the embedded reading. Here's where you lost it, right there. I'm telling you, I think it's making a run for the 18-day average. I don't think I was too off. And this morning in my subscriber videos, that's the paid one. Remember, you're watching me with this hand behind my back. You don't have all the studies or any of that. I'm telling you, early, before the whole market's coming down, folks, you don't have to go any higher. You're in the zone. Be careful. This is where bad things can happen. The video's out there, it's on my website, no change, it's in the member login. That's what I was telling people. I feel, I feel I did my job. Where'd you go up here? You lost your embedded reading. Okay, so you wanna know what to do next. Well, that's what my paid subscribers will see, not you. Next, we take a look, let's get the VIX up here. I hope it'll load in, there you go. When we were coming down in the VIX, I was saying, the same thing to my to my people i was saying let me come back one there it goes now it'll back off <clears throat> lower highs lower lows this is where you were the market never did embed momentum was down big time support i said it in these videos over and over i said you're in that area now folks you don't have to go a lot lower and this is what you did today you turned away when this goes up stocks go down when this goes down, stocks go up. Pretty simple. Then we get to the T-bond. And in the T-bond, as much as you're going sideways, not for one moment am I turning bullish in this market. And yes, the current trend is up. Higher lows, higher highs. Do I want to trade the bull side? I have the right to make a decision not to make a trade. Why? I'm never going to fight the Fed. And the Fed wants to take interest rates higher. I will wait for the sell signals to develop. And if I miss something, I frankly don't care. You don't have to be one of these people that you get a chart signal. I've got to take every signal. That's not the smartest thing you can do when you've got a Fed, a Federal Reserve, making a determination. Yesterday, did you hear? If you get my newsletter, you read because I gave the excerpts as to what Fed Chair Powell said. I've never heard him so hawkish. And I have followed this man the whole time he's a Fed. Now I'll let you be the buyer here. You don't have any trend in the 10 year. You got lower lows, higher highs. You're just fighting the battle right here. Dollar index down back into support at the 18 day average. And all you did here, 
all you did on the euro is you lost the embedded, you made your run to the 18-day average, and you're failing. This is still a market where the pros, I think, are trying to be short, not long in this market. British pound, same thing. Do you want to be long the pound when the Bank of England is telling you they're going to raise interest rates dramatically to fight this? You heard Mr. Bailey. He's Inflation there is 9% now. He thinks it's going to 10. So they'll fight it. Then, on the next leg, I might say, okay, maybe they've gone far enough where they think they got it. Then I can get friendly to the market. You got to think these through. Don't fight central bankers. Why? Because they will break you. I used to watch in, in the pit, in the, in the trading floor when I was on the floor, and I, I was their uh, trader for a short while, but I spent years running a trading desk on the floor. And I watched the biggest trader on the floor when T-bills came on start going against the government. He was used to pushing around pork bellies. He was a great trader. And I watched him get taken down. And why? They didn't, you know, they didn't realize the Fed can just keep selling. They just keep moving into the market. <laughs> he didn't get it. And I get what he didn't get. Nobody knew. These were the first treasury instruments we had. And I watched it and I learned and I said, ah, there is one, one thing you can't fight. And that's called the government. And the Fed is independent even of the government. They're not subject to the criticism. And if they're telling you they want to raise interest rates and they're going to read what the Fed chair said yesterday, you take the buy signals, I'll take the sideline. In the Brent, down pretty hard, okay. But it's all it did is come back. That was the differential of Brent and WTI. All it's done is come back to the 18-day average. But the bigger picture here, you're missing. The market has gone from the upper band to the lower band to the upper band, back to the 18-day average, and just whipping traders back and forth. It is not the place to be. In WTI, it's identical. These two are married. They're, they're a dollar or two dollars apart. Upper, lower, upper, back. Okay, if you're a day trader, maybe, but as a position trader, I don't know. Gasoline, I like. Summertime's not even here. People are going to take vacations. They're going to drive. I realize they may not take the five-day vacation. They may take a three. They might not be able to do two weeks because of the cost of rooms and fuel. They might take ten. But they're still going to take the kids. They're still going to get in the car. They're going to take joy rides in the summer. That is not going to change, my friends. And on these pullbacks, I still think this is good. However, when you lose an embedded reading, watch, you're going back in my concept to the 18-day average of closes. That's what I'm looking for. And from there, my eyes start opening up as to what to do. Natural gas. You got a big customer. You got a brand new customer. They want everything you can give them. Did you hear what I just said? Everything. And that means they'll pay for it because they got to get rid of Russia to replace what we can get to them. Their problem is they don't have the ports, <coughs> the infrastructure to take it in, nor do we have enough ships to get it there the way that we want. But everything is going to be well bid. So on pullbacks, I think natural gas is still a natural commodity to look at. Now, tonight, as I said, I'm writing a big newsletter, but I, I want to make something clear. You see this Lynn research? It is part and it's free to my subscribers, my paid subscribers. So let's assume you spend $7.95 for my morning subscription. This is $500 a year. That is thrown in. So as long as you keep your subscription, you're getting that as well. Then you're getting our mobile app. That would be a $50 value thrown in for free. My updates, my special reports, and all this, you got a real package of information with, guess what, pros that have been around these bull bear markets. We've traded grains. My company, the guys in there 40 years trading. You think we haven't seen this? Are you out of your mind? We have seen it. We talk about it. We tell you about it. You get all this. How do you get it? Just follow my finger. Come right on up here, right through there. You want to go to our education area. You can take a look at the research I have. 
the free offers, if you get from there, you go over and you see that, we can give you this from Lynn for a week. That's how you're gonna see it. We're not, we don't wanna prove a darn thing. We know we have the product. It's that simple. You have to learn to take advantage of it. I'm Ira, you have a great day, I am, and I'll see you tomorrow.